So getting into some of these examples, and the first two that I have do happen to be power plants. Uh, they, uh, they're they nice uh, projects because they tend to be fairly dramatic. They tend to, uh, you tend to see they tend to be large chemical users. As you can imagine, a cooling loop and a power plant is incredibly important to keep online all the time and to keep as efficient as possible. And so they really offer us, in a lot of cases, some of the most dramatic and compelling examples of, of cooling tower and cooling loop uh, uh, performance and improvement. So this is the first example I'd like to show. Is a, a Puerto, it's a, a plant in Puerto Rico uh, for a, called the Prepa plant. Um, uh, there's actually we have a number of actually cooling towers in at uh, power facilities and other facilities in Puerto Rico. But this is one of the most interesting case studies that we've done. And one of the most, most documented case studies that we've done as well. Uh, there's actually some papers that have been published that, that uh, if you would like to see, if you haven't seen it already, uh, you uh, you can ask your account manager or go to our website and you can get a, a, a nice articles that have been published in magazines uh, on this on this particular project. But anyway, if you look at the photographs, which I always like the photographs because those are very, you know, they're very easy to look at. You can see before, you can see after. They really speak volumes. Uh, as they say, a picture's worth a thousand words. Uh, but in this case, you can see on the left-hand side uh, the baffles and some of the uh, mist screens and things like that on the, on the cooling tower are coated with algae, biofilm. On the right-hand side, you can see they're just, they look practically brand new. All the structurals are clean. Those baffles are clean. Uh, just after making the switch over to the mixed oxidant. Secondly, uh, you can kind of, you can see the uh, tube sheet at, 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 on their um, uh, uh, on their uh, condenser, and on the lower right hand side of the left set of drawings, you can see it's all crudded up with a bunch of biofilm and then trapped uh, and trapped uh, solids and trapped hardness particulate. And on the right hand side, you can see that it is completely clean. So just pictorially, this is an incredibly uh, an, an incredibly uh, compelling uh, comparison. The chemistry that we did replace at this uh, site was a uh, Nalco um, a Stabrex uh, combination. Uh, so that's a combined, um, they call it stabilized bromine, but really it's a combination of bleach, uh, sodium bromide, and then they adjust the pH up to stabilize the chemical <clears throat> in the container. And uh, one of the most interesting things about this particular plant is that it is what's it is a, a true base load plant on the island of Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico has a number of different uh, uh, power plants on, on on the island, and they some are powered by coal, some are fueled by coal, some are fueled by gas, some are fueled by uh, uh, fuel oil, and so the uh, uh, the the absolute cheapest power for the for them to generate into the grid, and all these plants are feeding into the same grid for the island, is the coal fired plants. So there is a huge incentive. The cost to operate these coal-fired plants is something in the neighborhood of about 50 to 30 percent of what it costs to operate the other plants. So there's a huge incentive to keep these plants running at absolute peak performance. And because of this uh, condenser on this plant was significantly fouled and they had a difficult time keeping the biofilm and the scale off of the system, uh, they could only produce so much so much electricity. Uh, that the condenser effectively chokes the steam coming off of the generators, and they can't run the generators as hard as the plant is actually designed to do. After introducing mixed oxidants to the system and cleaning up that, that condenser tube, they were actually able to have a, a 9% increase in the power generated at the entire facility, which equals approximately a $30 million payback uh, in power, additional power that they could sell into the grid, which, uh, as you can imagine, even though the chemicals would have paid for this by themselves, a uh, $30 million bonus on additional generated capacity uh, pushed the uh, ROI on this down, down, down to less than two months. Just to show you the, the graph that they used to actually track this information, uh, this, is, uh, this is actually taken from uh, the case study that was published in, in one of the magazines. Uh, and uh, this uh, graph depicts two things on the single graph. The red line is the load that the plant was actually able to uh, uh, produce at any given time, and that correlates to the right y-axis. And you can see that it started off at a little less than 180 megawatts, and at the, at the end of this particular graph, which is, represents one month of operating time uh, with mixed oxidants, they were able to move that up to 200 
uh, megawatt uh, capacity. Uh, the other line on here, the blue line uh, with the trend line that has been added uh, through it, is the temperature in the condenser itself. So the uh, what this, or I should say, the temperature technically of the of the recirculating water. So what they're able to do is by uh, by uh, improving that temperature drop across the um, across the condenser uh, from about uh, 45, a little over 45, down to uh, closer to 40. Uh, degrees C, uh, they were able to significantly improve the performance of the condenser and hence process more steam, hence generate spin the turbines faster, and then uh, generate more power. So this is probably one of our most exciting ones. It's just a very fascinating case study uh, that uh, is, is really fun one to talk about. Another power plant, uh, NIPSCO, is uh, in northern Indiana. Uh, uh, well, I should say NIPSCO stands for Northern Indiana Public Service Company. This particular plant is in Wheatfield, Indiana. And uh, they have four towers, each approximately 90,000 tons. So it's very large towers. Uh, each, uh, each tower actually cools for a 400 megawatt portion of the plant. So it's a total of a 1,600 megawatt facility. So a very large facility. And they uh, decided to do a, uh, a, a phased uh, implementation of mixed oxidants. So they did one tower first, and uh, then there's three additional towers that are being converted over. And, um, uh, and that way they could actually do a real-life, side-by-side, real-time comparison between old chemistry and new chemistry. And the old chemistry in this particular case was the uh, bulk sodium hypochlorite, bulk sodium bromide, as well as for six months of the year, they would dose uh, a, uh, a Buckman Laboratories pro product algocyte called Bulab 6060. Uh, all of those three chemistries were replaced with a single mixed oxidant chemistry. So even during the high LG portion of the year, they just used the mixed oxidant chemistry. We have some additional photos, too, that show before and after in the hot deck that I'll actually show you that the LG is significantly cleaner and the tower is significantly cleaner. But most dramatically is these two photos here that you can see on the condenser sheet, condenser tube sheet. Again, before mixed oxidants, you can see the biofilm. You can see entrapped particulate and, uh, and, and, and pieces of hardness. And then after mixed oxidant, you can see that the sheet looks practically brand new. Now, one thing I wish that we had done on this one is go back and look at that uh, increased efficiency on the plant. But unfortunately, we didn't. Uh, we didn't think about it at the time. They were focused exclusively on, uh, on the just cleaning the things up and reducing their costs. But they're saving approximately $160,000 a year on chemistry for the uh, for uh, this is just the chemistry for each tower. So it's a total for the entire plant of about $640,000 per year. The next two examples are kind of on the other end of the uh, spectrum for us. They're uh, what I would consider to be sort of medium to small size towers. And I like to use these examples uh, for a couple of reasons. One is uh, Thermal Chicago is one of our longest customers, uh, actually. Uh, they have been operating the system for years and years. So if anybody wants to speak to a customer that has a long time experience with the chemistry, uh, they're a great customer to talk to. Uh, and uh, and they, uh, it shows that these these chemical benefits and the cost benefits apply even to the medium and small range system. So those other large systems are fun to talk about, but this is definitely an applicable chemistry, an applicable technology into the small range, especially with the introduction of the Rio Zuni product line, which gives you access to one and two pound per day generation at a very, very cost effective and very easy to use, uh, 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 almost fully automated uh, system price. But anyway, Thermal Chicago, they have a number of systems. This actually is, uh, this photo shows one of the systems. If you're driving into Chicago from the, uh, from the west, you'll actually see this off to the side as you're getting close to, right off the highway, right as you're getting close to driving into downtown Chicago. Uh, there's also a couple other installations which are up on top of rooftops in downtown Chicago as well. But the Thermal Chicago facilities provide chilled water for environmental HVAC control during the summer and a very small amount of chilled water during the winter. Predominantly, these are used in the summer. But uh, they had constant biofilm uh, and algae growth issues while they were using sodium hypochlorite, sodium bromide, and isothiazolin. And that was what they were using previously. 
So there were two motivations for looking at the mixed stocks in a chemistry for this, this particular customer. One was to reduce operating costs. Uh, well, actually, three reasons. Three was to improve performance, hopefully improve performance. And third was to eliminate the delivery of, of uh, over 50 drums per year of chemical into downtown Chicago, right next door to a pharmacy that had nice big biohazard labels on the side. So in this particular case, just the public perception of eliminating the delivery of that had those hazardous type chemicals into a downtown environment of a large city was very, very attractive. So in the uh, 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 in this particular case, they uh, did make the conversion. It worked extraordinarily well. Biofilm and algae were, were cleared out of the system and out of the tower within approximately four weeks. They saw about an 18 months payback on the chemistry by replacing those those expensive chemicals with uh, just a salt and electricity and, and a generator. They saw no degradation of the scale or corrosion inhibitors. That was a big question that they had was would this chemistry react with uh, polymers or azoles or phosphonates or other things that were used in the tower chemistry and they have seen no degradation degradation of the additional scale or corrosion inhibitors. In addition, they took a look to see if uh, there was any increase in corrosion, and in reality, they thought there was a reduction in the corrosion rate on both steel corrosion and yellow metal corrosion. So the moral of the story is that excellent microbial control, even at elevated pH, uh, disposed of a lot of uh, unattractive-looking drums. They actually only take one delivery of salt per year at this plant that are at their, each one of their locations. Uh, and uh, it's a really nice success story. This plant's been, I think the earliest one, this Chicago thermal plant has been running now, I believe in excess of five years. It's actually been quite a long period of time now. And finally, uh, even a, a slightly smaller system for a 7,000 ton cooling tower at a neurosurgery center in uh, Illinois at a large teaching hospital. Uh, this is another nice uh, installation for us, again, on the small end of the spectrum. Uh, and uh, the, as, as uh, we talked about earlier, Legionella in certain applications uh, is, is a particularly sensitive issue. And it is a particularly sensitive issue when you're looking at something like a hospital, where you have a, uh, a clientele that is potentially immunocompromised, uh, may have other issues uh, related to that. And as a result, uh, it becomes very, very important to eliminate virtually any uh, potential for Legionella, uh, even as something kind of unusual like a cooling tower sitting up on top of a building. Uh, so the, uh, that might not be necessarily a person's first thought as a contamination point, but they, these guys did think that far ahead and looked at treating it and improving this, uh, the performance. So the photos, again, you can kind of see the greenish uh, uh, film and algae on the, uh, in the tower for prior to it, and you can see that uh, the water looks much clearer, and you can see the, the, the bottom of the basin much clearer after the myox. Uh, one of the things uh, that they've commented on is it's visibly clear and the slime and, uh, slime and green algae has been eliminated and they've had no positive Legionella count since the Myox installation in July of 2011. So this one's been running a little over a year. They've had great success with it.